Hi, it's Kodiak. Just want to make a hopefully a quick video. My my computer is very noisy with the fans running. Uh, it's presumably it's because I'm trying to record a video at the same time as run multiple in instances of Vice and actually another emulator there as well. But anyway, the point is I want to show quickly the um, non-standard color mixer utility for the Commodore 64. Um, we'll start off with the PAL version. This is PAL in CRT mode on uh, VICE. And um, we'll just play around with it. The top of the screen shows the dynamic checkerboard method, hence the DCM. Um, this is this says a ALM, which is alternate line method, which is the method that was used in Mayhem in Monsterland to get the non-standard colors. Um, now that doesn't work in NTSC, but it works in, in PAL. Uh, as long as the two colors are of the same luminosity. Now here we start off with... Uh, I think that's supposed to be red. Yeah, it's supposed to be red. <laughs> it's not red now, obviously it's cyan, so I'll loop back around to red here. Yeah, red mixed with blue, so they're not the same luma, but so you, you can see the, the lines on the alternate line method. It, in other words, it doesn't work. It doesn't give a blend for that. But with um, the dynamic checkerboard, one by one pixel over here and two by one pixel over here, uh, it does, it works, it works quite well, at least on Vice. Um, but you can download the utility yourself, try it out on real hardware, try it out in Vice, play around with it and see um, see what you can do yourself. So we'll try changing the other colour here. Um, yeah. So now we have red and dark grey. They have the same luminosity. So on on PAL you will get um, the alternate line method. You'll get these new hues. Now depending on whether you have an odd bass or an even bass, you'll get it more Leaning towards the red end of this of the the um, whatever you would call this, I don't want to call it a spectrum, but um, the polemic. <laughs> uh, I'm too tired for this. And the over the other side, um, this is the even bass, and it's more towards the the grey end. Um, and of course, the dynamic checkerboards produce um, a sort of an in between variant as well, right? And I think, I think that works okay on the um, real life hardware, the CRT output. Um, we'll try another one. I think we'll try um, probably I'm trying to think. Yeah, green. We'll, we'll go for the the famous olive green of Mayhem and in, in Monsterland. So we'll change the A to green and the B needs to change to pink so I'm going to loop right around. I didn't make this the most user friendly utility in terms of you know going backwards, you can only go in one direction but I only coded it in one afternoon so I can't expect too much. So yeah Mayhem and Monsterland uses the ALM with the uh, even bass in favour of uh, the pink but if you do it in favour of the green, you get a more sort of um, you know, more greenish hue rather than this olive green. And then there's the two colours mixed using dynamic checkerboard. You get a third colour. Again, one by one pixel here, two by one pixels here. And that's explained somewhat in, in the article as best as I could, as I could manage. Um, I'm not going to pretend I have perfect understanding of the mechanisms of, of it either, because I, I don't. But um, finding the information, finding out the information about it is extremely difficult. I mean this is this is uh, 40 year old tech so that's probably the reason why. Um, and then you can do other things, nice things like nice combinations I think like I would say mm, one that I like is um, let me see sky, yeah sky blue and uh, well, sky blue and pink doesn't work for the ALM. You can see the lines, 
but it does work pretty well on the dynamic checkerboard at least on vice it does anyway you may find it doesn't work so well on real hardware or you may get this the jailbar effects depending on your um, your monitor your cable and your your hardware so I'll try and set this over to um, cyan so yeah again it doesn't work in ALM but with dynamic checkerboard you get this nice new shade of of blue so I suppose you could have um, you know you get multiple shades of blue here you can have normal blue the sky blue then this intermediate between sky blue and cyan and then cyan itself so you could have a fourth shade of blue there um, so that will do for PAL now we'll look at yeah we'll look at NTSC on um, this is just a Commodore 64 on Vice and th this is a Commodore 128 in C64 mode on uh, it's a different emulator I forget the the name of it um, but we can come back to that in a, in a moment alright so let's see yeah so red and blue gives you the dynamic checkerboard effect but um, as with PAL, it doesn't it doesn't work on ALM. If we try um, try and change color to something like I think yeah, there's like a red and pink. You get a, an intermediate pink on dynamic checkerboard. Uh, Greg Nasu in Canada told me that the two by one works better on the uh, on the monitor output on real hardware. Than uh, the one by one for NTSC, but I think I think it's the other way around for PAL output. Um, going by the feedback I, I got from John Henderson in the in the UK, um, we'll try. So here we have red and dark grey of the same lumen. Now on on if we go over to PAL again and just replicate that again Try and put that up. yeah so you see the ALM gives you a smooth continuous hue on on PAL but on NTSC it doesn't work because it doesn't have the the PAL color bleeds but you still get these new colors uh, or sorry this new color I should say in the um, in the dy dynamic checkerboard effect, and you can get other. Sorry, I'm pressing the wrong one. Yeah, something like well that's red and sky blue gives you a kind of an intermediate purple that's lighter than this purple. Um, there was I'm trying to. Yeah, red and black seems to work reasonably well. On uh, or sorry, any color with or, or any dark color at least on black seems to work pretty well on NTSC. Um, but I think Greg said that red and purple worked really well uh, uh, in reference to the uh, real hardware on the two by one. And then we'll try it on this other emulator. This is, this is NTSC. Uh, Commodore 128, but running in Commodore 64 mode, which means there's um, we're running at two megahertz in the border here and and here, so we have a, a tighter frame rate. So the dynamic checkerboard effect should hopefully work um, a little better. But I can see, at least on the on the emulator output, the two by one seems a bit more rough. Uh, you know, it's less smooth than the one by one, but going by what Greg had said, the two by one works better on real video output. Um, let me try a few more here. I'll try. Oh, that looked kind of interesting. <laughs> Let's see if I can get one. I'll try and get. No, oh, I seem to have scrolled past white. You can see I didn't really c 
code this very well. Uh, I think that's supposed to be white. It looks more like a light grey. Yeah, I don't think it really works, but yeah, you get this nice kind of minty, lighter than cyan shade here. I think works. Maybe. <laughs> But you know, muck around with it yourself, see what you can, sorry, play around with it yourself. <laughs> and uh, see what you can get, I think uh, cyan and green could be a, a winning combination. Um, I'll try another. I think I found uh, green and yellow worked quite well as well, g for an, an, a nice new shade of, of green that's lighter than, obviously lighter than green as it were but it's darker than the um the light green the native light green yeah that's the native light green there so yeah i would suggest you play around with those and see what you think and then i'd just like to finish off by showing you something completely different just a visual effect from Parallaxian in development. This is just the explosion from Parallaxian and with this I'll finish. That's us.